I now have my multi-zone home theater set up running both my dedicated home theater room and my living room off of the same set of sources and the same set of processing. It's working awesome. Let's talk about how I set it up and why you might want to do it. So in my home, I have two zones for entertainment. We have a dedicated home theater space in the basement for movies and multi-channel audio and all of that sort of thing. And we have a television, a flat panel, and a 2.2 audio system in the living room for listening to music, watching TV, and some secondary viewing of movies and video games and that sort of thing. I've long ran them as two entirely independent zones, separate sources, separate processing, and for the longest time, I've overlooked the multi-zone capabilities sitting dormantly in the Marantz preamp that I'm running now and in other similar models that are available. With the advent of some new source devices like current generation game consoles and such, I had the epiphany, why do I want to maintain separate sources? Why do I want to have a PlayStation upstairs and a PlayStation downstairs? I don't get to take advantage of quick resume as I move between zones with my game. I have to download and manage installations separately. I've got to buy two consoles, which are hard enough to find. And if I want to expand storage, I've got to do that twice. I've got a really expensive gaming PC. There's no way that I'm building two of those things. So how can I use the same source in two different zones? Optimize my setup, add a whole bunch of efficiency to it. And the answer is the multi-zone capability that's just sitting dormant in so many of our receivers and our preamplifiers. So I did an earlier video where I kind of did a proof of concept of the idea, uh, but now I've completely optimized everything. I've eliminated the separate receiver that was running the living room, and it's all based on one, set of, one side of my rack right here, one set of devices, again, one processor, and one set of sources. I've been using it for a few weeks. It's all configured and programmed in my Control 4 system, and so far, it's been bulletproof. Of course, I just jinked myself, and it's all gonna fall apart now, but we'll see what happens. So what I want to do is we'll, we'll take a look over the system itself in terms of what's here and, and how it's configured. We'll take a look at the specific wiring connections and what devices are connected to which and how. We'll do a little bit of a demo. And then I want to go through the settings specifically in the Marantz preamp used to achieve this multi-zone configuration. So let's start here in the middle where the magic is done. This is my Marantz AV7704. As mentioned, it is the one and only processor in the system now controlling both zones, the home theater main zone and the living room zone too. Down below that, I've got my Emotiva amplifier. That's an XPA 11 Gen 3. That drives all 11 of the speakers in the home theater room. Going up, here's the amplification for the living room. I mentioned I have a 2.2 system in there that's using two triad silver LCR in walls and two triad silver bronze subs. So we have two amplifiers, rack amps, 300s, driving those two subwoofers, and currently this Triad PAMP1200 two-channel amplifier driving those mains. So one processor, a set of amplifiers for the second zone, and an amplifier for the main zone. In terms of sources, we see here the Kaleidoscape Strato S, two Apple TVs, and the reason that I went with two Apple TVs instead of one is, of course, the device in the broad spectrum of AV gear isn't that expensive, but Apple TV is the one source where I could conceive wanting to use one in the living room and use a different one playing different content in the theater. And in order to accomplish that, it obviously required two of them, not just one switching. If I had stuck with one Apple TV and it was being used in both zones, you would be stuck watching or listening to the same piece of content. Up on the top is the gaming section. There's the custom built. 3080 Ti gaming PC, PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, and the lonely little switch over on the side. So again, a major benefit to doing something like this is that single set of sources. If I wanted to take a Kaleidoscape and use it in two zones, or I would have the Strato S here serving the theater room, but I would additionally need a Strato C as a second zone player up in the living room. That alone is a few thousand dollar device but in this kind of multi-zone setup, I don't need it. I can switch the Strato, basically matrix it to the zones and use it in the living room if I want to. Same thing again for the game systems. One PC, one PlayStation, one Xbox, one Switch. 
I don't have to cart the switch around and dock it in different rooms. And particularly in the case of the Xbox, being able to quick resume multiple titles, moving from one zone to the other, using the game system like that, it's just so perfect. I also had some integration challenges for my living room, how I have things set up for some of these game consoles. That PlayStation 5 is pretty big, and while I was able to squeeze it behind the television for a little while, it maybe wasn't the best setup. And this Xbox Series X with this six inch, six inch tower really doesn't fit behind any kind of a, of a slim profile space behind a TV. So getting all of these sources out of the living room just cleaned up that installation so nicely. Literally just running one wire, one HDMI cable up to that, uh, up to that zone. So let's take a look at the wiring config. This is the back of the AV7704. All of these HDMI sources are filling up all seven input ports of the Morans. And I'm using the same cables here, the infinite HDMI 2.1 cables for all of those sources. So we've got the Apple TV 1, Apple TV 2, Kaleidoscape, PC, Xbox, PlayStation, and Switch over on the side. You can notice my HDMI outputs. There's one on the Zone 2 output, and there's one on the monitor output. Of course, the monitor output, treating the home theater as the main zone, goes through the wall here into the theater directly to the projector. The Zone 2 HDMI comes out, goes up along the wall, and then through the floor up behind the TV in the living room. Of course, the Emotiva amplifier is connected via all the bottom XLR cables and the subwoofers as well for the home theater zone. And then I'm using that zone two audio output, those two red tributaries cables. They come out of the zone two pre-outs of the Marantz. They go in to one of the rack amps daisy chain from the line out of rack amp one up to rack amp two, further chaining out of rack amp two up to the PAMP one. And I did a separate video on it, but you'll notice the RCAs for the PAMP one don't plug directly into the rack amp. They go through those Harrison Labs FMOD crossovers, which are basically giving them a 70 hertz high pass filter. The base management for the subs is done in the sub amplifiers, basically tuning the crossovers to low pass 70 hertz to the subs, and here high pass 70 hertz to the main speakers. My speakers themselves are connected there via the Phoenix connector, and then the subs are directly wired in on the binding posts. The other element to doing this effectively is managing the triggers. Thankfully, the Marantz AV7704 has two independent 12-volt triggers. One of those triggers, trigger one, goes down and into the Emotiva XPA11 amplifier. The other trigger, trigger two here, goes up to the PAMP1 amp, daisy-chained out into the Phoenix connector there, for rack amp number one, and then finally daisy chained down again to the other Phoenix connector for rack amp number two. So all of the amp power state is completely managed by the AV7704, properly turning on the amps based on the zone that's turned on and turning them off when the zone itself is turned off. It works exceptionally well, no auto sensing, no doubts, all fully, fully reliable. And of course, one of the beautiful parts of this is it's all drawn together by my Control 4 system. So I have my EA5 controller here with a zone and a room set up for the home theater and a, and a zone and a room basically set up for the living room. Each room contains their respective displays. The Marantz preamp technically belongs to the home theater room, but with the right programming, you can present the sources from, from one room into another room and designate them and allocate them as basically a zone source from the other amplifier. So everything turns on and off and manages its power state properly. If I'm only using the living room, the preamp is running in zone two mode. It'll switch based on the, the selected input for the living room. Conversely, if I'm only running in the theater, the living room is off and the preamp is running and controlling just the main zone. Or of course I can use them both simultaneously for the best case, generally using different sources. Now it will let you use the same source in two rooms simultaneously, but one of the things to realize if you do do that is it might affect the sound output in the theater 
because the living room is just a two channel state. In my opinion, you're better off not trying to do that. And if you want to do this multi-zone stuff and you want to do this matrix type switching that's entailed with it, you want to, you want to base it on using separate sources. So you're, you're consuming one source in the theater space and you're consuming a different source or at the same time in the living room space, not the same exact source simultaneously. And again, that goes back to the idea of Apple TV is the one thing that I could see being used in both places at the same time. And so I bought two of them. Thankfully, that's the smallest, cheapest, easiest to purchase device out of all of the sources that we have here for that kind of uh, dual use. So let's go take a look in the living room. We'll show them a Rants app and do a little bit of a system demo. All right, here we are in the living room for a quick demo. I'll do my best to try to maintain some steadiness in the shot here, but we can see the system is off, the TV is off, no signal. I've got my iPad here running the Marantz control app, currently set on theater mode, which is also powered off. If I click to the living room, we can clearly see Marantz living room zone power off as well. I've got my Control 4 Neo remote and the source selections available there, Apple TV, Kaleidoscape, PC, Xbox, PlayStation, and the Nintendo Switch. And I've got three controllers here set to demo the, the three consoles. So let's start with the Apple TV. If I engage my Control 4 Apple TV on in the living room, you can see right away the Marantz kicked on, the TV is coming on, everything's waking up, and there's my Apple TV. So that's again one of the two Apple TVs in the rack, the one dedicated or generally used for this zone. When you do this too, I recommend, and the way that I'm using it, is I don't switch, I don't flip-flop really which Apple TV is used in which area. I have one designated really for theater use, and I have one designated for living room use. And that allows me to ensure that a lot of the picture settings and the audio settings stay consistent, meaning the one in the theater is always configured to output multi-channel and Atmos, the one in the living room is HDMI set to expect and be able to output Dolby Vision, where of course the one in the theater is always outputting HDR10 because it's a projector. So this worked great. We can see there Marantz living currently set to Apple TV2. If I pull up the source list, there you can clearly see the difference. Apple TV1, Apple TV2, and again, two is the living room's Apple TV, one is the theater's. And we have the Kaleidoscape Xbox and so on below. So let's try switching some sources and they all work essentially the same way. So I'm not going to show everything. If I go back home on the control Four Neo remote, let's go to the Xbox. So I'm going to hit the Xbox input. We can see there we have a TV change, the Marantz change to the Xbox. And then if I turn this console on, There's our Xbox. Xbox input, controller controlling the screen, Xbox input working fine. Let's do one more, home, PlayStation. Let's see, we get a switch on the Marantz for the living room input to PlayStation. Turn on the controller. There's our PS5. Took a little longer to wake up from sleep. So once everything is generally running and on, the wake ups and such are pretty quick. I don't necessarily have to switch the inputs as well before I actually turn the controllers on just as easily. Actually, I can demonstrate that as well. So here's the Nintendo Switch. Let's turn the system on. There we go, it's locked. Now if I switch inputs, Boom, there's the switch. Nintendo input, ready to go. So if I jump back and forth a little bit with just these systems on, we can see how quick the switching is. PlayStation, some HDMI resyncs, there we go. Let's do the Xbox. You can see the input registration changes. 
and there's the Xbox screen. So pretty fast, pretty simple to use. Control 4 makes it all possible, and that's good to go. And we have everything here. We have full 4K, high bandwidth, 18 gig, HDR, Dolby Vision, through to this TV. It all just works. I can't demo the Kaleidoscape. At the time I'm making this video, my Kaleidoscape Control 4 driver was just updated, and some of the bindings need to be reset. So if I shut this off, turn off the room, click the TV is off, and power off to this zone is complete. And if I were to go back downstairs and look quick, we would see the Marantz itself is now off because no zones are active, and the amplifiers driving these speakers and subwoofers would be off as well based on those triggers. Perfect, solid. Okay, we're here in the Marantz setup menus, and let's take a look at the, the elements that help us control a zone two. Just for reference, there's really nothing under the audio tag related to this. If I go down to video, HDMI setup, one of the things that you need to do if you're using an amp, a preamp, a receiver, or whatnot in a multi-zone type of setup that I've seen pretty much universally recommended across the multiple, um, multiple devices that I've looked at is you can't use CEC. CEC and HDMI control gets really confused when you're trying to manage multiple sources and it doesn't understand exactly what source is routing to which place. So if you haven't done it already anyway, for general reasons, if you're doing this kind of a setup, CEC needs to be off and as it is, it's, it's configured off here. Output settings, uh, really nothing here related to zone two and everything else is pretty standard. Of course, I am running in enhanced mode because I am switching HDMI 2.0, 18 gigabit to both locations. If we go down to inputs, you can see my input assignments here. Um, the two Apple TVs, Kaleidoscape, Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo PC, basically just mapped to the HDMIs. I did have optical one configured there because I have um, experimented a little bit sending optical out from the TV. Currently, I have no sources directly connected to the TV, so it's using HDMI audio only. I always like to rename my stuff. Um, I don't particularly like the way Den and Marantz uh, labels inputs by default. I wish they would just number them, hint, hint. But in any case, these are all renamed to reflect the devices on the given input. The other thing I would recommend, not necessarily a zone two specific thing, but hide the sources that you don't use and keep them out of your list, it reduces the presentation of your system complexity. All right, let's go back. So speaker configuration has nothing to do with zone two. Speaker config only has to do with the main zone. That's already set up. As I've talked about in other videos, I have a 7.2.4 system in here, doing the zone two had nothing to do with that. Same for network, this is all default settings as well. I'm not using HEOS, and so general is the area that we want to get into. And there's a couple of specific settings in here that are needed. So if I go into zone two setup, here you can see kind of the whole list of zone specific settings that the Marantz in this case provides. I'm not making any bass or treble adjustments. I'm not adjusting the high pass filter. This would be used for um, controlling the frequency ranges that are sent out of those um, RCA pre-outs. And again, I'm not, I want the full range because I'm doing my bass management externally. My subs are doing bass management and I have the external high pass filters going to the speakers. If you just had a two channel setup only with no subwoofers in your second zone and you were running your speakers full range, then same deal. You would keep the high pass filter off. You wouldn't need any kind of bass management in the RCA stereo pre-outs for zone two would be full range. You can make adjustments to the level. This is basically gain boost. I don't have any applied. Um, selections for stereo or mono mode. Of course, I have the 2.2 setup, so I'm going for stereo. Um, this is the important setting, which basically, at least on the Marantz, either enables or disables that zone two audio. So in here, if I change this to through, it will take the input audio signal via HDMI and directly pass it out the zone two HDMI output. So that's actually what you would wanna use if you were using a separate processor or a separate receiver and just using the, the 
the preamp in this case is essentially just an HDMI matrix switch. But again, I don't think that that's the best way to really do this zone two. If you're gonna have a separate processor, there's other ways to manage perhaps your HDMI connections and so on. I think the real beauty of this is having one processor and managing your speakers by amplification only for each zone. So in that case here, I've got PCM selected. And as we can see, it says there selects the audio signal format for playing an HDMI source in zone two. And for PCM, the HDMI audio source is converted to PCM format. So you can listen to HDMI sound from the zone two preout or zone two assigned speakers. That's what gives us the stereo down mix. Now, volume level is variable. The nice thing about doing this is again, or is, is you have one device for volume control. So that Marantz preamp is managing volume for each zone independently of each other. If you were passing out to another device that was perhaps an integrated amplifier or something like that, that was controlling volume, then you would wanna set this perhaps to a fixed level rather than variable. But I'm not doing that. I want the Marantz controlling volume. You can set a volume limit here. I just have it set to zero dB. And nicely, it gives you a default power on volume. In my case, I've got this set to minus 40 and an independent control for the mute level, whether it's full or mute actually means still play volume, but at a much reduced level. So you get the same controls for zone two and zone three or relatively the same controls for zone two and zone three. The big difference here, the big difference here for zone two versus zone three in the Marantz's case is zone three is only for audio. Zone two gives you the ability to do audio and video. Another item in the list here is the zone rename. So you can leave them as main zone, zone two and zone three. You can see though, I rename mine as theater and living, reflecting the two rooms that the zones represent. And I just nullified zone three there with a none. Also nicely in the Marantz apps and such themselves, you can basically disable the presentation of the zones. So in my Marantz um, iPad app, iOS app and, and so on, I only see the theater and the living zones. I don't even see zone three as a selectable option. I really love when the UIs and stuff let you do this. I'm a huge fan of disabling the things that you're not using. They just convolute selection lists and, and all of that sort of thing. The last item in here worth mentioning is the trigger controls. So we talked about the Marantz having two 12 volt trigger outputs and I'm using out one for the theater zone. So you can see here that theater is on for trigger one, everything else is off. And conversely, if I go into trigger out number two, living room is on and everything else is off. You don't have to set these for specific devices. You can leave them generically for the zone and whatever is selected in the zone will cause the trigger to go high. If you want more fine-tuned control, and you're maybe specifically designating only certain sources to certain zones, you can have those go on and off independently. So there's a good amount of granularity in here, but I found the simplest setting and the best, uh, the, the simplest setting and the most reliable control just comes from mapping the trigger out to the zone that's being used for it. And that's it. So there it is, my complete, finished, stable, multi-zone home theater setup. Again, using one zone for the home theater space and a second zone for the living room space. If I think about what this saved me in terms of cost and complexity, again, the cost of the amplification is less than running a separate receiver or preamplifier for that separate zone. I've got one gaming PC, one Xbox, one PlayStation 5, one, PlayStation 5, one Switch, and one Kaleidoscape dual Apple TVs, and I can put all my money into a high-end processor and use that processor to serve both of those areas. I think it works great. I'll be sticking with this for a while. And I think if I were to add any more sources, the likely next one is a record player, maybe getting into some vinyl. That'll go up in the living room for easy accessibility of putting records in and playing them and so on. I'll be able to run that audio all the way down to an audio input here on the Marantz and be able to switch it to both zones. So if I still wanna play some records in the living room, I'll have to get them started, cue them up, start them playing, and then come down here to the other zone to listen. So this is great. And again, it works by virtue of having that second zone be a stereo zone. I'm a big fan of the living room, basically just being two channel. When you have a dedicated theater space and you're doing multi-channel surround sound in a room, in an area that's really dedicated to it, to me personally, I don't find a lot of value in trying to replicate that to another zone of the house. I don't miss surround sound up there. 
Phantom Center works awesome. Spend the money, put the investment into a nice two channel setup for that second zone. And it gives you the ability to do stuff like this very easily. So if you have any questions, please post them in the comments. If you're trying to get something like this set up and you're not sure about a specific element, I'd be totally happy to answer some questions and give some guidance. It took me a little bit of finagling and some experimentation of hooking things up in different ways to arrive at all of the right settings and the understanding of how to make this work. And I'll probably be sticking with this for a good while to come. So thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. A whole lot more content coming. If you're looking for ways to support the channel, the best thing that you can do is subscribe and look down in the description below for some Amazon associate links and some other ways to support the channel coming soon. Thanks again and give multi-zone a try.